Hello everyone, and welcome to the Farakara Guide. Um, we are covering the Japanese carriers in this little mini-series. Uh, today is our penultimate episode where we cover the Tier 9 title. So let's get into it. Following the same uh, guide and uh, setup in these videos as we've done with the previous videos, we've already covered the whole show right through to the Shikaku, so if you've not seen them in the previous playlist, highly recommend you go see them. Uh, as was before, we're going to be covering uh, the modules, the exteriors, upgrades, uh, captain skill signals, camouflage, that type of stuff. We'll go into a random battle, we'll apply what we've spoken about into a game, and you can see how I would play the particular character. Now, the Taiho is a really fun tier 9 carrier. It only has one enemy counterpart, the Essex, and itself in a mirror match, and I feel that with the recent changes I've uh, spoke about in the Essex video before, the Essex has had a slightly bit of a downgrading nerf. However, all Essexes will now have two fighters, and those two fighters outside of enemy AA will be slightly better than the titles. So we have to keep that in mind that the enemy carriers are either going to be as good as us, aka, you know, two fighter Taihos, or going to have slightly stronger fighter planes in the click-on engagement and the strafe, uh, such as, for example, the Shikaku for the Enterprise, but the enemy carrier, this instance the Essex, has down-tiered fighters and will suffer more in enemy, so friendly AA and his uh, enemy AA for his planes, and it's more fragile, and we can work around that. Now, let's go straight into modules then. So, what do you get first? Well, the flight control package stock is 222, just like the Hiryu Shikaku. You upgrade to 232. That gives you a third torpedo bomber. It gives you far more striking capability considering your dive bombers aren't really that punchy. They're more just for fires. The alternate setup is 322. 322 might be viable in a competitive scenario if there was one at tier 9. But that's not the case. I wouldn't sacrifice... Like, I know it's tempting if you feel that you're you're not doing very well fighter-wise, but I wouldn't sacrifice a torpedo bomber for a fighter plane. Three torpedo bombers allows you to go after and kill nines and tens. Two torpedo bombers doesn't. Three torpedo bombers gives you lots of leeway and practice to kill off destroyers. Two gives you, there's no er room for error. There's more flexibility in the striking capability <clears throat> of the tile. So I personally always go two, three, two. Uh, the first upgrade I would get is probably the fighter planes, the tier 9s, then I would get the flight control mod to get the extra torpedo bomber, then we would get the tier 9 torpedo bombers followed by the tier 9 dive bombers. Thankfully on the Japanese carriers everything is at tier, there's no down tiering or anything like that. For upgrades, we take the fighter uh, damage increase, or it's all plane damage but it's mainly for the fighters, we take the module damage control system mod that reduces the time that we're firing flood, the chance to be put on fire flood I mean. Uh, we take the plane health, it's great for being an AA, it's great for fighter dueling and locking. <clears throat> Ammunition, however, is the more important reason, so we have lots of strafes, lots of exiting, that type of stuff. We can outplay the enemy carrier. The uh, damage control system modification 2 reduces the time that we're on fire or flooding. Typically, if you're on flooding, you're going to damage control that, but if you're on fire, you might want to just let that tick out. Concealment expert, sorry, concealment uh, system modification 1, which just reduces the concealment. There's no reason why we want target acquisition. And then the last one, which is the tier 9, 10 modules, the air groups mod 3, this increases our health of our bombers by 15%. <clears throat> this means that unlike the Shikaku, who has to deal against tier 9, 10s, the Taiho's planes are tankier, they're faster, and with this module, they're even more tankier. And it means that we can typically go after ships that you would not go anywhere near to tier 8, tier 9, you're like, well, actually, I'm, I, I can probably go after this guy without losing the entire plane wave. The other option is the speed, 5% cruising speed. I don't honestly feel that's necessary or helpful. The speed might help the fighters getting from A to B if you're fighter heavy-ish, but the bomber health is not only good enough to when you're going into attack, it's also if you want to scout. You could argue that if you have extra speed, you're inside the enemy or less, and that's fair enough. But if you want to spot with your bombers and leave them inside enemy A because you want to spot with them, then the extra plane health, especially for the dive bombers, is going to mean that they last longer in AA and you're going to be spot for longer. So that's why we take air group modification 3. Ammunition consumables. I always take two charges of defensive fire just in case somebody has a real hard on and tries to kill me. And I always take damage control party 2 just in case I'm being shot at from lots of directions because with the recent carry changes and the damage control party changes, even though that's active for 30 seconds, the odds of being put on fire for higher tier carriers from 7 up to 10 is the same as a tier 6 carrier. So you're quite flammable. So you want to definitely have an extra damage control part too in case some DD or something kind of hunts you down. For captain skills, I have two different captains for the 9s and 10s, uh, which we'll go over here. The concealment um, of the Taiho is kind of bad. And uh, so with the in this particular captain, we go with uh, concealment expert. So 
before we get into that, let's say Aircraft Surface Expert, that's the standard uh, one point. We take Torpedo Acceleration because we want to cross drop. There's lots of fast drawers, Cabros, that type of stuff. If we want to kill them, we need the Torpedo Acceleration, otherwise it's pretty darn tricky to get them. If you go all torps from one side, maybe you'll clip them, but we're, we're talking about skill behind and how I approach it from the side drops that kill people off. I find that Torpedo Acceleration is a better skill for that. Uh, for the three point skill, because there is no ranked or competitive at tier 9, and because you've got three torpedo bomber squadrons, torpedo armor and expertise is golden, it's really really good, um, and you would want to take that to maximize your kind of output. We don't take basic fire training in this uh, instance, because it's not really necessary. The AA with the defensive fire on the Taiho means it's very unlikely that you're being attacked, plus it's only single carrier one on one games, so it's not really taken. Uh, the first four point skill is air supremacy. We want to bump up those two fighter waves. We want to bump up those two dive bomber waves. It's better air control, it's better scouting or dive bombing. We always take dogfighting expert as well. We're not going to come across higher tier planes other than the catapult fighters, but we are going to need the ammunition, so it's a very useful skill to have. That leaves eight points left over. We can take advanced fire training. We can also take manual fire control for AA armament, okay? And that means that our self defense with AA is really, really high, but we already have two fighter planes. We already have um really good anti-air which becomes crazy good in the hakuryu so in that respect our mid-range guns our bofors are pretty powerful so in this instance what's the benefit here i think using advanced fire training rather than manual fire pushes up our mid-range guns it pushes up our long range guns six kilometers it also pushes up the defensive fire now up to 4.2 kilometers so there's a panic effect at a sooner distance and it also means that we can snipe planes that are coming into a range at six kilometer range so that's good why don't we take also manual fire? Well, I feel like concealment expert. We could push our concealment down to 10.7. It was higher than that, and it was kind of uncomfortable. Tile can be a little bit more stealthy, a little less detected, and it kind of works. Are you going to be attacked by planes in this tier? Well, no, probably less. Plus, an enemy Taiho attacking you, your AA is probably going to be good enough to go against the torpedo bombers. If he's going to waste his bombs on you, that's great, because he's not going to kill you off if you know how to position and angle yourself and use your own planes. And if it's an Essex that's trying to attack you, his planes are down tier to eight. His dive bombs, his AP dive bombs don't do anything to you and your armor flight deck, and his torpedo bombers are tier eight, so you could just kind of AA flak them down when they get close enough, and defensive fire is going to kill them anyway. So you don't really need to go like maximum tryhard AA, like say the Hero or the Shikaku is, right? And spoiler alert, if we could show you the Hakuryu, on the Hakuryu, I keep the concealment, but we, we take away the advanced fire training and I go with manual fire because there's a huge wallop of long range AA guns, and that's just more of a kind of a flavor feel. The Taiho Captain is the captain that I personally use on my Kaga, so I use the uh, the AFT in concealment, but I can also use the Hakuryu one as well, and that I can use the, the manual fire secondary armament. It's a choice. I have two captains that can do it this way. You can do it either way. You can mix and match back and forth but i definitely recommend taking torpedo armor and expertise on the 9 10 carriers compared to the six seven eights where we don't take torpedo armor and expertise because of the sniping threat or because of the ranked competitive element in the 9 10s i take it because we've got three torpedo armor waves and we load them quickly and we want to get as much damage out there as much as we possibly can anyway that's our 19 point captain build let's go into a random battle oh i know a second one sec just before we do that Cons uh, in terms of uh camouflage Pick whatever works for you, experience, captain, whatever it takes. I've got the perma camo on my Taiho. Signals, uh, because I'm, I'm using uh, experience, I'm using the flood and fire flood. And then I'm also choosing to take the two experience, uh, captain experience, because I've got 90 point captain, I get elite captain experience. You could choose to take the AA signal, you could also choose to take the speed. The fact is, the Taiho already goes 33.5. If I chose the speed, it'd be 35.2. Do I need that extra speed? Maybe, maybe not. It really depends on your personal preference. Uh, do I need the extra AA signal? My AA is already pretty lethal. I could make it like super duper lethal, but do I really need to min-max it to the extreme or can I afford not to? And the odds are I probably can afford not to. Uh, in terms of flags, you know, pick whatever you like. Right, that being said, now let's go into a random battle. There's nothing really we, we're too concerned about. We're probably going to get dragged into a 9-10 game, well, a 10 game. We're tier 9, so that's kind of expected. Uh, we need to be aware of anything that has a defensive fire that can cause a panic, but we're usually going to aim for destroyers or battleships or anyone that kind of isolates themselves, or if we know there's like a cruiser that's going like, to use the defensive fire, then we can pretty much kill them off. We can even go after things like Minotaurs and Neptunes, provided we get a good, clean approach. We can, with the three torpedo more ways, we can do a lot of damage, maybe even kill them off. So, wow, we've been quite fortunate with the matchmaking. We are top tier. So we've got a 7-8-9 game. 
enemy Taiho mirror match. Okay. Uh, he might be 3 2 2. Actually, let's check the. If we hover over. No. Minus four planes. Is it air superiority enough to create a minus four there? Hmm, that's interesting. He might be 3 2 2. Anyway, if he is, we're going to deal with him. He'll be an idiot. <clears throat> Enemy Baltimore is probably the only real cruiser on the enemy team as a threat. The New Orleans and the Pensacola defensive fires are annoying at best. Fiji doesn't have a defensive, York could. One destroyer, we could gank the destroyer, and that means it's really difficult for the enemy team to capture because it is a domination game map mode. So we are very powerful in this particular um, scenario. And this big wide open areas. This is actually the worst map for cruisers and battleships to try and get into a cap. So if we can spot the enemy destroyer and then pick him off, uh, then it's a huge benefit to our team. In this, in this game mode, we have the maximum ability to carry. So we'll do fighters first, then we'll do torpedo bombers, then we'll do dive bombers. We'll get our fighter, we've got one destroyer ourselves, so we need to protect this guy. He's like our... Um, the same thing that we just said about killing the enemy destroyer is the same for the enemy carrier killing our destroyer. So we want to keep him safe. So it looks like the enemy carrier wanted to do TVs first. And we're like, nah, go away. Not interested. That is not happening. If we didn't do fighters first, our Benson could have been in, in, in threat. I don't want to go any deeper because I don't want to fly into potential AA uh, bubbles or anything like that with cruisers. So I am just keeping the planes away from our Benson, allowing him to get into the cap. Oh, there he is. He's fire down the south. He's going down south. He's not paying attention. Boom. Good. We can now go for the destroyer. Oh, Baltimore's there, though. We need to be careful about the Baltimore. Oh my god. Baltimore wrecks us there. He's going to be forced into a turn here. Let's see if we can't cross drop him. He exits straight as we tag him. Two torp hits. Alright, he's probably damage controlled. 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000, and drop. He's also killed his speed off. Boom, got him. Right, that's a huge benefit to our team. Even if we lost the fire duel there, we're actually equal in fires. The reason we're losing is because the Baltimore's moving in. The torpedo bombers on our Benson is the issue. Alright, let's turn around and pick up some speed. Alright, that fire's broken off. So we're actually equal on fighters. Uh, I, I willingly chose to prevent him from engaging, stopping me from killing the star. The Benson needs to run, because the, the thing is, the bottom of the radar will, will come around the corner. He doesn't have any enough support. Oh my god, everyone's going A. Now, normally I'd reload these fighters, but two is enough. I'm going to try and stop um, the torpedo bombers from getting like, an easy kill on something. I'm going to turn my ship around and go pick up some speed, wait for the dive bombers to land, that's what they're doing. Now I'll take the torpedo bombers off. Uh, we're looking for targets of opportunity, Missouri, Fiji, that type of stuff. Now the problem is because I didn't have my fighter um, land, he will have an advantage because it will be 5 on 2 versus 5 versus 5 because I didn't turn this guy around. His bombers are not doing anything, they're being pushed back. Fiji's a target in here with the smoke ends. Oh, hello. He's actually got his fire plane out early. He's not grouped them up. Oh, hello. You've gone into Baltimore AA. 
sense. Why did you do that? Never strafe into ships that you don't know what's there. Wow, that worked out really well for me because he was impulsive. He saw, oh, there's two fighters. I can strafe them. He doesn't know what's behind them. He doesn't know there's an A ship. He got wrecked. And that means that when his other fighter plane comes back, it'll be a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so that, that suits us just fine. Right. Now, the bottomer might have used his defensive fire there, so we want to keep our plane around. Fiji's dead because of the radar. That's also good. Missouri is probably what I want to attack next. Or the north, the Iowa, the York. North. Enemy team's going to have a hard time capping because they, they only cap south because that's the only thing that's not spotted. Right, so there's the Missouri. Don't want to fly too close to him. York, all right, so I can go for the Missouri or I can go for the, 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 the Iowa, right? The Missouri's been kind of protected by the fire, so if this Iowa continues to make this long turn, he might actually be too close to the island for me to attack. Yeah, I'm inside the Iowa's long range AA, which is not the greatest thing in the world. But we're going to go for this Missouri. It might actually even be AFK Missouri. Boom. See his fire's incoming. He could actually strafe. I'm going to tr force him away. All right, so this Missouri is moving. I'm going to back off. Good hit. Six with it. All right. Let's see if we can't extradite some of these guys. Right. Fire planes are okay, so we have to go around him. Missouri damage controlled. I'll try and tell people to hit him, but that's unlikely. If I can get fires on him, they would be sticky. So I'm going to go this way and this way. Turn around. He's inside the Benson's AA. The fire's... All right. Let's see if I can get to the Missouri now. Oh, my fire plane lost a lot. I'm going to exit straight onto his fighter and just leave. Oh, wow. Got wrecked by the AA. I'm kind of... My fires are kind of stuck um, inside hostile AA bubbles, but... The Missouri now has got sticky fires. There, we got an extra fire on him. The extra damage, that's going to stick, that's going to hurt him. I'm going to go north now. Let's see if we can't get our single fire back, get our other ones up. Take off our third torpedo bombers. Boom. All right, TB's on the way. Pull this one fire back because I'm being a little bit wreckful. Oh my goodness, yeah. I need to be more careful now because we're down to no fighter reserves left over. I mean, to be honest, was it worth going after that Missouri? Not really. We'd lost quite a few TBs, but we lost kind of that kind of fighter advantage. I'd rather maybe shouldn't have done that. Iowa in the middle is isolated. He's probably the only person who's... Uh, I don't know what he's doing trying to stay broadside everything coming at him from the south. But we can go after the Iowa. I can't stop those TBs, so I'm going to stop these fighters from intercepting these torpedo bombers. And we'll hit that Iowa in the center on B. Actually, we'll go from the... I don't know if I can go from the south anymore because that fire plane's there. And that... He's inside our AA bubbles, so maybe a little bit of patience. Oh, he's trying to strafe. See that? The rapid turnaround. So I'm going to go around and click it. Keep him from escaping. If he wants to escape, he needs to exit strafe. He could strafe with that, but he's going to fly straight over, which he did, which we then moved out of the way. He tries to strafe. He's strafing straight from top of Iowa. Never strafe into heavy AA ships. Well, do what I say, know what I do. I knew I could strafe him. And that I was being a nuisance here. Because he's, he's doing exactly what he needs to do to be to avoid most of the damage. Oh, that was frustrating. Flooding is good. Right. We don't really have any spare fires left. Is he still in floods? No. Okay, so 20 seconds on the clock. Right, it's another 10 seconds. Let's go now. Let's see if we can get some fires on this Iowa. Boom. You know he's A-spec. 
problem is that uh, we, we can't do the, the ideal thing. We just need to get him. Didn't even get him. So he's clearly in high spec Iowa. The team going around north get, threw away the whole advantage of us killing off the destroyer early. Because they couldn't have capped, they couldn't have pushed. If we'd stayed BC, we would have had a huge advantage. But that wasn't to be the case. This this guy is going to die because he's like surrendered on all sides. Uh, our team is safe from enemy bombing attacks because we've outplayed the enemy carry in terms of uh, fighters. Uh, we just need to be aware of uh, bombers. But the problem is that these torpedo bombers will smash anything. Um, and I, if they're inside... So I'm going to do it from further behind, so I don't want to strafe into his AA bubble. Okay, we may get some damage. Oh my goodness, an AA already. This is a particularly vicious Iowa. If I go after him, this may be my last of my bombers gone. What else do we might have to kill? Quite a few ships, to be honest. Down to three fire planes. I mean, we could go after this Iowa, but hopefully other people kill him, so we don't have to do that. I'd much rather go after, for example, a Fred or a Turpitz, because I know I'll, most planes will survive. Lots of focus fire fire in Iowa. Probably don't need to go after him. So yeah, I'll probably go after this Fred down here in the south instead. <clears throat> How much else the Turpitz got? As far as we're aware, full. Okay. All right, cruiser's gone. Iowa's nose on. Provided he doesn't die because he's broadsiding another Iowa and he's going to die, which is just tragic. We still have the, the numbers advantage, provided he gets one for one here. Okay, fair enough. We need to really push the B though. Okay, because I know the Turpets... Ooh, whose capital fire is that? That's the Turpets capital fire. Okay, so we'll go after the Fred instead. <clears throat> If I could, I would maybe try and flood him out and then flood him again. Um, yeah, let's try that. We're, we're hoping to get a flood here. Okay, good. Flood. Now we need to find a position where we can, like, did he damage control party? Yes, so let's bring the fight. Now he's going to turn around. I might be able to drop him in this corner here. He's really close, but I think it's droppable. I need that fire plane just to survive just a little bit. This is actually... I think this is too close with the oh the capital's panicked. I don't think I'll connect here. No flood though. And that's that's the cruel mistress of RNG. And so he's still got his, his bomber planes left over, but this uh, he's not got any fires. I've got very low strafe damage, and the only way I'm gonna kill him is with strafe. So I can cause panics, I can kind of position him out of um, force him out of position. Uh, had we had a flooding on that Fred, he would have taken a huge amount of damage. That's why we didn't try and strike him with everything. But it wasn't to be. Our team does have to go for the cap. I mean, I'll do it. Okay, so we're almost deplaned here, which is sad. Uh, in terms of enemy ships, Purpose is probably going to die. Hmm. I guess the carry feels he's desperate. Let's see if we can't catch him that way. Two fires. Perfect strafe. Did as much damage as we possibly could. Mitigate it as much as we could. Pull the fire back. Game's almost over. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm actually probably going to be detected by the turpits, but hopefully he dies to like that and then turn away.
So Terpitz is He's stalling the points on A, which is really annoying, and none of our team are really getting any kills here. I guess we could try and bomb him. I mean, his capital fire is going to be down. I mean, if we're going to bomb anything, might as well. no, his capital fire is down. That's annoying. Um, I don't really want to sacrifice the last fire to just try and kill the turpits or wound them. I think our Maggie will do deal with it in Cleveland, so that's that's easily enough. Uh, we're getting the B over stalling the B, so that's fine. Baltimore. Yeah, I know I'm taking shots on the surface. The thing is, I forgot to mention is there's an armor flight deck on the Taiho, so as long as we don't show our side, we're going to be okay, but... I'm not sure Mikey pushing into the with with repeater bombers is an issue. Oh man, and by not going for the cap, we are... The game clock's down to 4.30. And the Baltimore dies. This is going to be a loss. Plus, I've lost too many planes in the on. That, that Missouri kill attack I did early on was really costly. Uh, lost uh, too many fire planes and lost too many uh, bombers. Which uh, means now, at the end game, when everyone's spread out and I should realistically be annihilating that Fred, annihilating individual ships, I don't have the planes to do so. And I'm not sure what he's doing. Are you trying to run him? What? What? What am I looking at here? Oh man, we're losing all our ships trying to move in. Well, I have to move for the cap, otherwise no one's going to do anything. Were, were you seriously trying to ram this guy? This is turning into an, uh, a Taiho into a what not to do battleship guide. Dear me, oh well. This is an example of maybe not my greatest gameplay. Um, by losing planes early on, I wasn't able to influence the game late. See, he still got a full set of bombers because he was patient. So, props to the enemy carry. He lost the fire control game, but it was enough uh, AA damage that. Um, wow, he is not dead yet. That I can't stop him. See, he's just systematically picking our team apart because I can't do that because I've lost too many planes. So I was impatient with the bombing. So don't do what I did here by getting yourself in a position where you can't, um, you know, bomb at the end game. You know, there's, there's, there's no defensive fire, there's no A ships, that type of stuff. So I'm stalling the. Wow. The Amagi died. Wow. I mean, I, I, uh, this is not the greatest game in the world, that's for sure. I mean, we killed their destroyer at the beginning. We gave a huge advantage to our team, right? I mean, wh what else do we have to do? Okay, I'll drop just in case we die. They're just those games sometimes when you can't do anything about it. Anyway, to, to cap off, um, be conservative. Even at tier 9 Taiho level, you need to be conservative with your planes. You can't just go willy-nilly bombing because if the game goes long, 20 minutes like we just did right now, you're going to be bled dry, you're not going to be able to influence the game, and just like I have, a person who's supposed to be experienced in carries, uh, we lose because I can't carry. Now, should I have had to have carried that badly? No, because we went A, and then the whole thing was really, really terrible. And um, we shouldn't need to rely on me to maximum carry the enemy, you know, our team against the enemy. But hey ho. Um, we killed the destroyer, we got the caps, we gave our team the advantage, but unfortunately our team just threw it away. And we didn't win that game. It happens sometimes. Anyway, that is it for the Taiho game. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, coming up next is the Hakuryu game. Uh, hopefully we'll have better results there. If you haven't watched the previous videos, by all means, go ahead and check them out. Uh, we're covering everything from the whole show right to the Hakuryu, just like we did with the American Line. And uh, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.